first of all, Jerry, thank you so much for having us into your home here on a truly awful day. Um, Sunday, you wake up today, like any other Sunday, a nice easy going day, and then when did this start to unfold for you? Well, I guess it was about 10.30 um, when I get a call from someone who said, did you hear that Kobe Bryant was involved in a helicopter crash? And that's a no. So immediately, there's a lot of information sources, which we've never had before, and particularly here in Los Angeles. And all of a sudden, they reported a helicopter crash, but didn't say that he was part of it. And then, obviously, the news gets out, and you go from hoping and praying that he's fine, to all of a sudden, the reality sets in that he's no longer here. Um, I'm just sitting here with my wife and trying to reflect back on my first involvement with him when he was 17 years old and um, watching him try to grow to be what he became, uh, watching this iconic basketball player who captured the city. And I honestly think because he was so young when he came here, 17 years old, couldn't even sign a contract. And watching him retire, watching watch his career soaring in another area, watching him become a, a father of four daughters, watching three of them look at him like this was the most incredible person in the whole world watching how he played with them, his love for them. Um, all of those things start to sort of bring back memories of my early days with him. And it got to the point where it was not easy. Uh, I had a brother killed in Korea, and honestly, it felt like I'd lost a brother, a son. Um, he was 17 in this house right here? I mean. Well, when we drafted him, he was 17 years old, or traded for him, he was 17 years old. And to watch him grow up, kind of be part of our family for two or three months here, he would come here and have dinner. My son would drive him around to practice. Uh, my son Ryan took him places. Um, um, his agent at that time was Arne Tellum, who has been a great friend of mine forever and sort of help orchestrate him here to try to get him through the minefields of other people taking him in the draft. And finally, we found a way to make a trade for him and to get him here in Los Angeles. And Was everybody on board with you for that, or were you out on a limb? Well, I think Jerry Buss was the most important one, and that's the one I most cared about. And um, because we were trying, it was a free agent period, and we were trying to make a pitch to Shaquille O'Neal and in doing so, there were certain things that we had to do to create more money to be able to pay Shaquille O'Neal. And one of them was to be able to trade uh, Vlade Divac, our starting center, who was a very good player. And uh, finally, um, it got done, and Shaquille O'Neal said yes, and that was start of a incredible run for the Lakers uh, with Kobe and Shaquille, uh, watching them grow up together, watching the... Watching them butt heads a little well, bit, right? Watching, Come well, on. That was later on. That oh. was later on. And uh, But watching the success and the joy that they had winning, but more importantly, what it meant to the city in Los Angeles. My goodness, the people loved those two guys. Uh, Shaquille, big giant of a man, fun, <laughs> and Kobe, the serious professor. But... Going to practice, uh, watching him grow, he probably wasn't ready to play because of lack of experience. It wasn't for lack of ability. And people always ask, uh, you know, and, and give way too much credit for us selecting him. But it was someone we wanted. And um, to think it worked out to where this, his, his name, his legacy, will live forever, 
but that's the tragedy of it uh, for me. I, it's one of the worst days of my life to sit around here and think about all the things I shared with him uh, growing up, trying to encourage him to stay positive, trying to not to get too anxious to get a chance to play. Just bide his time, he's going to beat somebody else out because he's too good. And we made a trade that I don't think everyone in our front office was happy with. Uh, we traded Eddie, uh, Eddie Jones, an all-star guard, and Kobe Bryant took his place, and from then on his career like was heading to the moon. Um, but, you know, think about those fun things, and then to think about what happened today, his family, his kids. Just think of his wife uh, is going his through wife, right now and his three other daughters, uh, the baby. The and people who depended upon him, his daughter who, you know, his basketball canopy. And he, which, Gianna was the little basket, yeah, basketball player. Yes, she was a player. very she good was, young player and he, how prideful of, he coached her team. And to, to see this happen, um, it, it really has been a day Frankly, it will kind of live in infamy for me. And I, I remember when FDR said that when I was a young kid when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Um, this has the same sort of significance to me because I was young then, I'm older now, and that would have been more significant then if I would have been an adult instead of an old guy today. But this is just... Uh, been one of the worst days of my life. I, 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 it's like losing one of my kids. Uh, it's like losing a loved one. Um, I have all these mixed emotions. Um, you know, sometimes they stay in, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I get emotional about it. And this has been going on all day. Uh, thank God I've received a lot of calls, texts, um, people who know how much I cared about him and how I'm how much I loved the success he was having in his life. Um, and I think I was telling you earlier that he was going to go to the Academy Awards. This year he had won. And he was just having a brand new tuxedo made to a friend of mine who makes some clothes for both of us. And I don't know, for some reason today, um, I thought of that, something... That his tuxedo is actually finished, uh, probably. Yeah. Or they're and to think he was going to go there, enjoy the adulation of people, uh, to be part of his new life, and uh, all gone, all gone. Did he, did you, did you help him, you know, through... Tough times. Like, was he? W were you a call for him when things weren't going his way? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, and Billy did some things that you know I, I wouldn't get into at all. Um, but there's one little incident uh, that I think bears mentioning. He was he was going to leave the Lakers, and I was working in Memphis, and I had two conversations with him. I said, Kobe, under no circumstances can you do this. I said, Where was he going? Work. Where did he want to go? He wanted to go to the Clippers. And ironically, I'm involved with the Clippers today. And that was two different conversations I had with him uh, that he just wanted to leave the Lakers. And I told him it would be the worst decision he ever made in his life. I said, don't be so emotional about it. I said, you've got to make an adult decision here. Don't do this. And at that point in time, obviously, I had a different owner who um, I wasn't in favor by a lot of people. And I thought his history, his destiny should be with the Lakers. Thank God he stayed there because yeah. I got a chance to watch him from afar. And I got a chance to watch he his legend you. grow. He thank you for that? Piece of wisdom. <laughs> well, we talked about it a couple of times. We talked about it a couple of times. But Billy, I didn't really interact, or I don't interact with players uh, anymore, unless they're players or not, you know, that are 
your older players I'll run in from time to time. I don't go out that much and, and don't see that much of people anymore that I used to play with. And um, But he was, again, he was like son to me. I, I, sitting here, hearing him talk in our house here, being involved with my kids, and we were just looking at pictures when my kids were really little. Um, both of them called me today, and uh, one of them, he used to work for the Lakers and no longer there. And he, he doing some work for the Clippers. He called me from San Antonio today. He said, Dad, he said, I don't, I don't think I can stay this game. He said, I'm just too emotionally wrapped right now. And um, it tells you the closeness that the West family had with him. And if you can imagine the closeness we had, how about the millions of people throughout Southern California and throughout the world? Oh, yeah. This is an uh, iconic brand. Um, again, he liked to play the Piper. He'd walk down the street, and people would just run and chase him like, like he was. Gosh, I just thought of something. I was at the Olympics 2012. Kobe Bryant was the biggest fan. Do you remember? He, he was the biggest fan of the other sports. Yeah. And he went every, we would do our stand ups at the hosting the show from the top of this building. And I look and I go, there he is again. And Kobe would have his, his the hood and sweatshirt is up, the earphones were on, and he was off to see his indoor cycling. Right. And Kobe would be seen at the pool. And he, was, he just went to everyone else's. Events right. where it brought so much life to the, well, to the Billy, team. He was curious. You know, what, what's really what's really weird is I played in nineteen sixty Olympics, okay, and no one knew who we were, and no one even when when we played basketball here in Los Angeles were really aware until later years that there was a Laker team in town, and I played in the Olympics and I loved to go to the other events, but. I could have gone anywhere, and no one would had any idea. It's not like I it was. is now, right? It's just not with the, all the social media, but um, again, his presence um, as a player um, and the love for him, and I'm not sure why that, because his personality is much more serious. If you if you were around him in person, he was fun, but if you were in a locker room with him or watched him play. It wasn't fun. It was a war for him. And I think people learn to love and respect that part of him. Do you... So when you, when you think of him, what... Is it a joyous moment that comes to mind? Is it a, a laugh of his? Is it him grinding, you know, like it's... Well, I think the first thing that was was the first championship. Because that's what he was all about. That's what his commitment to. Commitment to excellence. A lot of people are committed to excellence, but sometimes they don't play with the right players. Sometimes they're with players that are not quite good enough to get them over the hump. But we had two players, he and Shaquille O'Neal, that could carry a hundred people on their back and get them to the finish line, and they did on more than one occasion. And for me to see that and see the joy, I saw a different person. I saw a different personality. And um, I was so thrilled for him that this journey, starting in Philadelphia, that's his first day, starting in Italy, when his father, was, his father Joe was playing professional basketball over there, I think that was a great learning experience for him to go over there with his family, to see the way, see how different it is living in Europe. And then coming back here, I think it made him a much more mature person. Watching him play in high school on tape, you just look at him and say, oh my goodness, uh, this guy does not belong in this game. He, he belongs at least at the collegiate level yeah. and probably at a different level. Think of the I, I just keep thinking about, you know, his wife and 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 the girls that he's left behind. Right, no. And I, have do we, have we heard and do we know what's happening with her? You know, I I, I haven't had any contact. I know my son is friends with Kobe's uh, sister, and um, they've been communicating a little bit. And um, 
It just the the family, his personal family is just traumatized and devastated as any family would be. But I think when you have someone who, in every family, everyone's different. You know, some people have great success and it's publicized. Some people have great success and no one knows who they are. And here was someone that, if you're a sports fan, if you haven't watched basketball, you knew who Kobe Bryant was. Oh, yeah. That was how special he was. And, and my thoughts, my prayers, my hopes are with his family because they're the ones who need it most. And uh, one of the worst days of my life. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure this is something that's not going to go away very fast for me. You've lived some life, Jerry. I mean, when things like this happen, you say, well, how the hell, how does this happen? Young guy with this beautiful life, and then you're thinking, what were we, were we all complaining about and fighting about on social media the other day? And what about the moments like this? Just, it, it knock us straight for a second, but it doesn't last long. Well, I, I tell you, you know, it's as simple as the people who were critical of him, okay? The same pe people that were critical of him, ball hog, shot too much. Um, there'll be the same people today that will be out there praising him, okay? Yeah. The same people, people, the same pundits. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's embarrassing that people will sink to that level to jump back on the, you know, it's always easier to jump off of the bandwagon just to jump on it. Mm -hmm. And for those people who wrote those things, it's a trend. God yeah. bless you. Yeah. It's a shame. It's a tragedy. Uh, for him to try to carry a team that was ill-equipped to win a championship, but a testament to his greatness, he could get him close. Yeah. And for people to say, well, you know. But uh, as I say, this world is a very envious world today. It's a world filled with credible contradiction. And athletes seem to elicit the most uncruel comments of all talking about the performance, choking. I'd love to see someone else in a basketball game with what meant everything to you, something you worked for all your life. It's the ultimate grueling test to win a championship. Ultimate. No, you've got it's the ultimate to play at that level for 20 years. And I said, I don't know what my next few days are going to be like. I don't. And uh, for two hours, I was I was a I don't know what I was for two hours. Just you know, you hate to think of a grown man crying, but um, yeah. it's brought a lot of a lot of tears today. And sometimes you think you're stronger than that, but you're not. When it comes to people you really love and care about. Um, and again, I think about his family. Mm. My God. God bless them. Uh, thank you for, uh, for bringing them here and being a part of that. And, and you know, you had to help, you know, raise them. As a, 17-year-old kid, you, you can't just turn them loose. So that was a, a big assignment, and you took it on on all fronts. And uh, what a great guy for the city. Spent some time out there at the crash site today, and I just talked to fans. So many families in jerseys, and the kids, and I just interviewed a bunch of them, and this, they're all just in droves of people, you know, well, I think, walking in. I think that's what happens when sometimes you don't, understand the importance of an athlete. Athletes can be the greatest leaders of all. And people in the political business who take a look at them sometimes because they lead people and people follow them. Yeah. To lead is to serve. The spotlight should be on the lead, not the leader. And that's who Kobe Bryant was.
in the, even though he accepted that mantle. He still was the guy who brought the people in. He still was a guy the people praised, admired. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.